Hello and welcome to The Rest is Football with Alan Shearer, Micah Richards and me, Gary Lineker. Uh, we've had another dramatic couple of days in the Champions League in which we've seen both English clubs are knocked out of the competition. Now, I'm not one of those fans that doesn't want English teams not to do very well if I don't support them. Um, and I know a lot of people would have actually taken pleasure <laughs> from the defeats of Arsenal and Manchester City, but um, I'm certainly not one of them. Mike, you won't be because they're two of your teams that you follow. Alan, as a, as a Newcastle fan, I, I, but you're, we're English football fans, aren't we, really, as well? It's a, it, was a, it was a bad night last night, wasn't it? Because we're recording this on the Thursday. It was a bad night, yeah. It, I mean, I didn't... Uh, before the game, I thought uh, I thought both clubs actually would have gone through. I, had, I was fairly confident. So I was I was very surprised. I mean, I, I wanted them to go through. Yeah, the longer they're in it, then the better it is for uh, for all of us. Um, but yeah, I was uh, I was really surprised at, uh, at at both both results. Really, yeah, I'd agree with Alan on that. Um, it was just it was just disappointing, especially the way Man City went out. You dominate the game, oh. especially in that second half. You create so many opportunities, although not clear cut opportunities a couple half chances and there's this thing going around with with Man City now and everyone's very disappointed when when Man City don't want because of the fact that they're such a good team but I, I was actually proud of the City boys I, I really mm. was I it's how far they've, they've come they're they're playing Real Madrid at home and they have like something like 66 percent possession you know, a team from where they were 10 years ago to, to now. But it was just a bit of blow to go out in penalties. And I don't buy into this notion that because Madrid have won it 14 times, they're more experienced. I just think in this particular game, it was a 50-50 draw. Maybe Madrid dealt with it better in that situation. And man, look, Man City were the holders of the competition. They know how to win the competition. But it was just, it was quite sad to see the reaction on social media where everyone is so happy that Man City are out. I just, I, I, I really don't get it. When Liverpool was winning it, I was happy for them. When United was winning it, I was happy for them. Obviously, Arsenal have not won it. But yeah, I, I, don't, I don't like this divisive attitude on, on, on social media. It's the tribality of it, isn't it? Really? Ex exactly I'm, that. I, we used to, and let's be honest, let's be honest, Manchester City were miles the best. Miles! Over the two legs, and particularly in the second leg. They played them off the park. I mean, I I saw an interview with Jude Bellingham who handles himself so brilliantly, mm. and someone asked him about Ancelotti, and he said, tactically, what does he do? What makes him so special? And he, and he, he was saying... It's it's kind of the freedom he gives us. And I thought, freedom in that game? You played like Luton. You were playing like <laughs> did on Saturday. You played 10 people, every man behind the ball. And you just hoped to hit them on the counter attack occasionally. And it obviously it worked in this. And credit to them. They defended well. Yeah. And Real Madrid do know how to somehow find a way. And they have that winning mentality, clearly. Um, but they were, let's be honest, they were bloody lucky. Really, really lucky not to lose that game. And we've seen it before in re a couple of years ago, wasn't it? When they went through the three ties with yeah. Chelsea, PSG and, Real and Manchester City, wasn't it? And they were outplayed in all of those. But um, they, do, they do have that thing that it, they do seem to churn out results. Um, I think it was, I think Pep said after the game that um, Johan Cruyff told him that um, there's no such thing as good luck, which I totally disagree with <laughs> I think you're lucky if you're born with the skill to play football and you can actually play football for, for a job in life so there's one example of a little bit of good fortune um, but um, you could see how sick Pep was he was absolutely gutted because he knew he knew they played they played brilliantly and they were just up against a team that defended brilliantly um, you know Rudiger was so strong at the back wasn't he brilliant. he really was yeah. Marlon never had a sniff but that, in many ways, is the beauty of football, isn't it? The beauty of football is that the best team doesn't always win. Now, that, that sounds like a bit unfair, but that's what makes football so special. If a team's dominant in other sports, they get battered and it's done and they win easy and it's fairly boring. 
in in football there's always a chance always a chance that you can win against all odds and i think and that added to the value of a goal which we we really saw in this game that the goal is is so special a moment that you don't get that in other sports because you know say basketball for example loads of points um, tennis has loads of games loads of sets um, all sorts of things like that but the value of a goal is so huge and so a small club can beat a big club. And it felt like this was a small club beating a big club. I know that sounds ridiculous because it's Real Madrid. But if Barcelona had played that way, I'm telling you there'd have been demonstrations in the streets in Barcelona. <laughs> How many superstars have you got on that Real Madrid team? You've got Vinicius, you've got Bellingham now, you've got Rodrigo. You, I mean, three, three of them I've just mentioned, they're working their absolute yeah. plums off. You don't go there and get dominated like they did and, to, and then getting the result you want without the whole team working. So uh, you talk about superstars and the ability and this, and that's what most impressed me about Madrid, how everyone, everyone had to do their job, including the big superstars, the game changers, you know, the one with the most ability in terms of scoring a fantastic goal or beating four or five players that shown what they can do for the team as well. Totally agree. Um, the what I suppose you know we didn't see much of Real Madrid going forward, hardly at all, apart from probably the goal really and one or two other little breakaways. Yeah. But the incredible touch and a uh, little bit of skill of Jude Bellingham for that um, contributed to Real Madrid's um, goal in that game was a bit special, wasn't it, Michael? <laughs> oh, seriously. I mean, we're, we're we're running out of superlative to talk about this man, and I, and I hope he doesn't use it all just to. Madrid. We want to save a little bit for the Euros, don't we? But that touch was just fabulous. And <laughs> his interview after the game, everything about him, it just seems like top level. Like, and I really hope he can keep this going. I'd, He's 20. He's 20. I'm so nervous about bigging him up so much because I don't want then in two or three years, we might be saying what could have been, but all the signs we're seeing now, because he's so level-headed, because he's so tactically aware, because he's got the flair and the attitude and the confidence to what we've been needing for so long, I just think he's got the full package. I, I, I really do. And hopefully in the summer, he can bring it home for all of us. Well, if it's not this summer, it'll be two years after that. And if mm. it's not that, it'll be two years after that. I mean, there's only a tournament every two years and they're difficult things to win. It's knockout football. Like we saw in the Champions League last night, you know, you, you can come up one day and it doesn't go for you. So you can get knocked out. They're knockout competitions. And it's actually harder in a national tournament because obviously you get one go. Whereas in this, at least there's two legs that you can do uh, something about it. Mm. But obviously as well, I might point this out that... Um, if we still had the away goals rule, Manchester City would have gone through. I know. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. But, you know, we can't be bitter. Like, like we said, Alan was exactly right. We talk about how Real Madrid defended and one man in particular, Rudiger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said in an interview, they're out for revenge and he didn't give Haaland a kick. Concentration, he was aggressive, positioning, Alongside Nacho, who is a midfielder really by trade, he's just at the back pulling the strings and organising everything. We've got to give credit to them too at the back. Yeah, it was a shock to see Kevin De Bruyne knock that one over the bar, which would would have would have clinched it. But you know, everyone uh, can miss a chance. Um, the, the De Bruyne and Haaland uh, went off before the penalty shootout. Um, apparently, they requested to come off, according to. To report, I read um, something Pep Guardiola said. Really? That was exactly my response. I went, really? That <laughs> Unless you're hobbling around on one leg, a request to come off. I'm not sure of that. That's what Pep said, I'm re reliably told, which is, um, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever asked to come off a game in my life, have you? And I can't. In a game of that magnitude, can I come <laughs> off, boss? Really? I'd be amazed. <laughs> Did you fancy them to win the pens? Um, I, 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 no, to be honest, I was doing, I was doing a game for CBS, and I was saying City need to win this before pens. 
because it just opens it up, doesn't it? 50-50. And I just... I'm not, you know, when you have a sinking feeling, I don't know if it was more the nervousness of the game, but for some reason, Madrid had got it to, to penalties after defending so well. I just thought, yeah, it's going to be their day. So I, I wasn't really confident if I'm totally honest, guys. I thought the same. Um mm. And they've had a tendency, if they've had a weakness in the last few years, they have missed quite a few penalties. Yeah. I, I, I suppose. It's, plus it's Real Madrid and you think, Real Madrid do win a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they're up against it, you've got to give them, you know, that, that credit, that never say die spirit that, they, that they've got at that um, football club. I know he's a fantastic goalkeeper and he's a brilliant passer of the ball. But what about, what about him taking a penalty? Oh. Before so many outfield players. <laughs> You'd be embarrassed as an outfield player, though, wouldn't you? Honestly, of course you would be. You think, Just what? about the best Good penalty. goalkeeper going ahead of me. Uh, <laughs> it was a brilliant penalty. I know it was... But you're thinking, oh, my God. I mean, compared to Kovacic's and, and Silva's penalty. Oh, Well, Silva's penalty, you know what he was doing. He was just hitting it down the middle, assuming. It was the only penalty that a goalkeeper didn't dive. Good homework, good homework. That's what I was thinking. They must have done homework because he, he stood and waited and he just gets caught. It's, that's the trouble when you go down the middle. I mean, uh, free speaking from personal experience. Um, it, it, <laughs> you do look a dope, don't you, when the keeper just stands there? <laughs> there was something on, on social media uh, and there was a penalty that Spinardo Silva took against... Uh, Ariza Balaga? Is that, is that yep, very nice correct? Very nice. Yes, Ariza Balaga. And there was a little bit of whispering going on to the goalkeeper. It was Lunin, who's obviously was yeah. supposed to be third choice. Obviously, Ariza Balaga has not been playing that well. Obviously, they have Couture as well. And basically telling him that it goes down the middle. So when you talk about homework, Gary, I think that's exactly what was done on that mm. penalty. And yeah. it paid dividend for him, didn't it? Those the, the little differences. The mm -hmm. little differences make... Um, um, but, you know, Manchester City have won the competition last year. But it, I think, you know, we, we talked about the possible history of, of of consecutive trebles. I mean, it just shows you how hard it is, isn't it, to pull off something like that once in your lifetime, let alone twice running. I mean, for us to even mention it and that they had a chance of doing it and a really good chance. Um, yeah, shows how, how how good they have been, how difficult it is. Having said all that, They've still got the chance to finish the season off remarkably yeah. well, incredibly well still. Although they'll be down in the dumps and feeling it. They've got such an important game again at the uh, the weekend. So it's it's back on the bike, as they say, and away you go again, isn't it? No time to, to sulk. It's a, it's a huge game. Yeah. I presume you were working on CBS, were you, last night? Yes, correct, yeah. Which game did you primarily cover? It was the Man City. That was, was the, the, what was the, the general perception amongst? Uh, I mean, like Thierry, I presume, was with you. As you know, as... yes. So Thierry was was talking about, and I think a message in the group yesterday when Foden on on the right, and um, we did something for Match of the Day Top Ten the other day, and we talked about Foden on the right, and we've had conversations about interlinking, rotating, all them sort of thing. But I just feel like when Phil Foden's exposed on that right-hand side, he can't have the impact in the game that he, he truly wants. So for I the agree. first, what was it, 50, 55 minutes, he was out on that right, isolated. As soon as he come into the centre, he said he's a different player. Bernardo Silva goes on, on to the right. And I just thought maybe in this game, if he would have started in the centre from the start, we might have had a different outcome well but they played both him and De Bruyne more centrally didn't they for the last 35 minutes or so 40 almost minutes. like two number 10s yeah and they look they actually look like that was in the spell they were really 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 dominant um at, at that point but you know I, I Gareth Southgate's going to have similar problems um working that out isn't he uh in the summer but lovely problems to have <laughs> to have that player available um and the depth of squad that England have got 
Always a tough place to go and play, though, Bayern Munich. And um, Harry Kane through to the semi-finals. Um, you know, wouldn't be bad, mm. would it? A Champions League success and European Championship glory, if that came to pass, after getting so much stick for winning nothing. But he's got, you know, there's three, there's some significant steps to go before that can be achieved. I was just about to say, do you fancy them in that semi-final, Bayern? Mm, I think they'll be second favourites. I don't, yeah, I think they've they've struggled at times uh, this season. But p- predicting things in this competition this season has been... I mean, I saw Micah's little clip on CBS giving it, like, so confidently giving it the four results oh, on the big I've, board. I've been absolutely <laughs> slaughtered on some, <laughs> this last 24 I hours. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Did you get everyone wrong? The Real Madrid fans have been in my DMs. I'm not exaggerating. I've had at least 150 DMs from Real Madrid fans. They're the worst. And and the thing is, if you actually look at what we're saying, Man City were were favourites to to win that. He got second leg at home. You're thinking Man City, especially after last season with the beat them 4-0 at home. So anyone with a decent footballing brain is going to pick Man City. Arsenal, we didn't know. We we always said with Arsenal, but I went with my heart. Arsenal, I'm not going to back my team. And Bayern Munich this season have not been the greatest. We've seen about Leverkusen winning the league, etc., etc., Atletico go to Dortmund with a one goal lead. The manager, Simeone, is known for his tactical nous in the low block. You're thinking, come on, they're going to go through there. And PSG, Barcelona, everyone's been talking about killing a puppy. He's, he's not the same. And the only reason why PSG basically w- went through is because Arujo. Araujo. Got sent off. Araujo. Can I pray that out, <laughs> gets, gets... You don't have to convince us, Micah, that you think you know what you're talking about. Let me, get, let me tell you one. The one thing that football predictions will do is from time to time, make you look, everybody <laughs> look a complete fool. So yeah. don't take it on board, Micah. Um, it, I, I, I think I made the same predictions as you. Um, <laughs> but I didn't go confidently pointing at the board with a super confidence. <laughs> it's going to be Manchester City. I saw, I saw the, Arsenal. the Arsenal. The Arsenal. The Arsenal. The Arsenal. Arsenal didn't make it. Um, and I mean, it's been it's been a tough few days for them, hasn't it? It looked a very even game. Not uh, not not a lot in it. Um, but yeah, God. I mean. <sighs> The, the last few days for them has been torture, hasn't it? I mean, getting beaten off Villa. Um, do you think that would have affected them going into the uh, into that Bayern game and then getting knocked out of the Champions League? Oh, God, what a, what a terrible few days it's mm. been for Arsenal. It's been tough, hasn't it? It's, it? It really has. I mean, you talk about... There's always that question mark around Arteta. He's had time, he's had money to spend... I still believe in what Arteta's done. He's going up against Klopp within the league, one of the best managers in what he's done at Liverpool, Pep at Man City. And and don't forget, they're new to this competition. You know, I think when you start doing well, everyone wants results straight away. This will give them so much confidence going into to next season. It's like Arsenal this season with the league. They look a better team than last season, don't they? Are we seeing signs of it ending in a similar manner to last season? No, I, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think we are. It was always that. If you look at the games where Arsenal have struggled, you go through the fixtures. It's when they've had three games a week. Really, I, I think that's the next step for them. Where Man City can deal with the three games a week. I think that's just the next step for Arsenal now. And I think at left back, as they've, I won't say they've, they've struggled, but it's been a weaker point with Zinchenko at times. Um, they, they brought in Tomoyasu, who's not been the same. They've had Kirio as well, who's played in that left yeah. back position. So they've not had 
a, a constant. You know Gabriel, you know Saliba, yeah. you, you know Ben White. Timber got injured, didn't he, right at the start of the season? T Timber gets yeah. injured at the start of the season. So they're all very good players in that position, but they've not been performing potentially at that consistent level. Um, but I, I don't think it's one of those things, and, I, and I'm saying this obviously because I've got a love for Arsenal, but they've done well. With, they've done well with a young squad. They just need now to don't let the wheels fall off. It can't end like it did last season, though, did it? It can't because otherwise, that, what Gary's just said, that accusation mm. is going to be chucked at them. You know, I, I, from in between now until the end of the season, I think it's huge for Arsenal because if the, I mean, if they don't do it, then it's going to they're this exactly the same thing is going to be chucked at them, whether they like it or not. Even if they just missed out on the title because Manchester City won every game. If they, you know, if they now kind of win pretty much every game before the end of the season, Correct. they can hold their heads up, can't they? Exactly. But they are years behind Manchester City in their development, aren't they? And, and probably Liverpool as well. You, you know what I, I think as well? If you look at Man City Arsenal this season in the league, obviously they took, what, was it four points off Man City? And... It took so much out of them. When you go mm. to, to Villa at home, I don't know if it's subconsciously, but you think, oh, the big one's out the way now. We've done what we need to do. The confidence is high. And then we look at Arsenal and the way, and we talked about it last week, about where they approached that game and sort of dropping Havertz a little bit deeper. If they would have respected Villa like they respected Man City, maybe they would have had a different outcome. It's almost like the, they said, okay, we've got Villa, we should beat them at home, we'll, we'll, we'll change the tactics a little bit, but they should have just went with the same tactics as they have done in, in the bigger games, I thought. I mean, it's, it's again, it's coming back to football, isn't it? It's tiny margins and that, you know, they've not been hammered at all by Bayern Munich. It was very, very tight, two-legged affair uh, against, a, obviously, a monster of a football club. So, you know, but to get two results like that, suddenly, you, you know, you're going for a double and then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, blimey. Mm. They might leave the season empty handed again. Yeah. But um, uh, but let's talk about the other two semi-finals, um, starting with Barcelona PSG. Barcelona won, obviously, away in Paris um, the week before um, with the Wonder Kids. Um, they score an early goal. It's looking like wonderful. Um, we're watching the game and then... What's his name again, Micah? <laughs> the red card? Come on, give it your uh, best shot. Ariujo. <laughs> How are you all? Uh, How are you? <laughs> Listen, Micah, and I'll get a little Spanish. Araujo. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. Very so, good, Al. Works with Jordi, I think. But the thing is... <laughs> the thing is, the um, thing is about he's... this game as well, though, Gaz, before you go mm. on. Yep. We had an interview as well after with Luis Enrique. Oh, did you? And, and there was a clip a couple weeks back in the, in, the, in the Champions League. Micah, I love you. I love the way you... you... Yeah, I saw that. Honest to God. He come back after, so after the game and whatnot. And re really nice guy. We go to interview him again. He comes with a straight face, stern face, and basically said, oh, so I, I come on loud, and obnoxious as I am. Luis Enrique, how are we? He's straight, he's got a straight <laughs> face on him. Everyone in the studio is like, oh my Awkward. God. Awkward. Awkward. <laughs> and he said, I've got a problem with you. The producers in my ear basically said, oh my God, Michael, what have you done? He said, you said Barcelona are going to go through. <laughs> you were my idol and now you're not my friend. <laughs> Honest, I was sweating. Yeah. I presume he was joking. I think, he, I, th I think he was he was joking, but he meant it. You know one of those ones? Alan, I can tell you, I can guarantee you now that Micah is going to predict that PSG will go to the final. 
I'm picking Madrid and I'm picking PSG. That's what I'm doing. I mean, if ever there's a turning point in a game, though, it was that, wasn't it? Because Barca, it was a red card. Um, it was, though, wasn't it? I mean, as much as you... Have you seen the, the little bit of fallout between Gundogan and... And Araujo. Yeah. I think Gundogan was a little bit critical. Yeah, he said, yeah. you know, even if they score, we're still winning. Um, but what he did, I, I, I mean, I'm not sure he should have probably have said that publicly. Um, Araujo came, mm. kind of did a, I think, a, a reasonable response. But um, when a player does that, though, early in the game, Alan, it, it, it kills you, doesn't it? Against a quality opposition. Of, and, and also, Raulco was the one player that they thought could cope with Mbappe because he is quick. It's, uh, it was the game changer of the game. I mean, if, that, if, when, how, whatever you want to do. Yeah, it, w- without that decision, then they're probably not going through. And I mean, PSG, again, they've had some luck in this competition, by the way, because remember that ridiculous decision that against them? And I'm not just bringing it up because it's Newcastle. I, I can't remember the last time you mentioned it, Alan. <laughs> Were they in the Champions League, like Newcastle, were they? <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> harsh, harsh. Hey, we had the group of death. Those two are now in the semi-final. If you had said to me when Newcastle played both of those teams up, they would have both been in a semi-final of the Champions League, I'd have said, no chance, not a chance. It just goes to show. And they, they got a bit of luck the other night, but fair play to them. They made the most of it and um, they, got, they got the result. You need a bit of luck in a, in a, in a competition, whatever competition, you know, at, at the Champions League and this. I mean, there's so, there's so little to choose between once you get to this stage. Yeah. You do need that break. City didn't get it. Um, Arsenal didn't get a break. Um, Barcelona, the same. I mean, I know it's obviously you know it's self harm in a in a way, but at the same time, it that that kind of thing makes such a massive difference, especially when you're up against the likes of Mbappe. Of course, but I, I, I think with that, go on, say it for me, guys. Araujo. 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 <laughs> But anyway, you know, people are talking about that that decision, whether you agree with it or you're not. As a defender in that position there, it was just a, a reaction, you know? So just instinctive, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Alan. So it's not it doesn't go like down. A millisecond the, too late. Yes, it, it just mistimed. The challenge. Well, he thinks he's going to get the ball, doesn't he? That's what he thinks. Exactly. So I get it. I get it. It, And that's what, I think there's a big like talk over, should he, it's just like, he's just mistimed the shoulder badge, you know? He should have just thought about it a little bit more and just not not gone in for the challenge, I think. Um, I was thinking, I'm not sure about the red card for that offence. I think unless it's clearly an obvious, you know, if someone's clearly, obviously hacking someone down that's through on goal, you know, those ones where it's just a fractionally late timed and there's no intent whatsoever. I don't know. I just feel it ruins the game. Yeah. It makes it kind of one-sided. And I, I, I know, it, I understand why it was a red card. I'm not going to, I'm not saying it's not a red card. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Under the yeah. current guidelines and laws and all those sort of things. But I, I don't know, just, just felt a bit. Um, yeah, especially after the start Barcelona got, that was a bit of a run from Lamine Yamal. Well, it's, it's, it's so, so talent brilliant wasn't it oh. yeah. pierce ability everything it was just yeah. magnificent wasn't it superb um Mbappe Mbappe back back scoring goals obviously one of them a penalty and the other that you know customary finish from from the great man um could easily be a PSG Real Madrid final with um, possibly Mbappe about to go to Real Madrid it's those sort of things do happen don't they <laughs> oh, I suppose that's probably the most likely Final, isn't it? But we'll come to we'll come to predictions in a minute because I know Mike is desperate to make his um, <laughs> um, make amends for his mistakes in the quarterfinal by getting the two semi finalists um, results right. Dortmund Atletico Madrid. I don't think any of us saw that being four two to Dortmund. I mean, no. Simeone as a manager in a game with what was it five and six eleven goals over the two legs is <laughs> something unusual. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't I couldn't I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Yeah. And if you'd watched Atletico Madrid this season, um they 
they've been a little bit more expansive in the way they want to play. But at the right times, they've gone in, in into a low block. But in this game, there was all over the place. I could The only thing I would say, Micah, that if you've watched them a lot this season, away from home, they have really struggled. So I wasn't necessarily surprised in the fact that Dortmund turned it around, given Atletico's away from it, but it was the manner and the fact that they got themselves into such a good position and kind of poor defending and stuff, which is not what you see from a Simeone side. Yeah, but that stadium, you know, you, you, when 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 they get going, when that stadium gets going, they've got some... I know. Oh, what? I mean, bloody have you, hell. Have you been the there, Have you played there? Or I've never been there. I've just seen it. I've just, it's like, I didn't go there this season with uh, with Newcastle. I've just seen the uh, the atmosphere and everything else. It's just, I'm rocking. Oh, it's amazing. I've done a couple of um, games there over the years at Dortmund in, in, the, in the Champions League and the yellow wall. And all. It the is, yellow oh, wall. It's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of Anfield-esque in a way, you know, they've, that it gives them that kind of advantage. Um, before before we, we move on on this, I, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Matson. You know, I watched Burnley he's in the Chelsea championship player, isn't he? a lot. He's on loan from Chelsea. Mm. He scores a goal. He's one I really thought would have a key part in what Chelsea wanted to do this mm. season. It it didn't transpire for him. He goes to Dortmund, scoring in the quarterfinals. All mm. round game was good, and Jaden Sancho. The eight, you know, mm. the eighteen months ago, do you think he'd be playing semi-final of a Champions League? Probably not. I don't think he was amazing yeah. in the game, but he he played really well f yeah. for the team. It's good to see the turnaround, yes, definitely. I mean, the thing is, of course, if you go back to the first leg, um, Atletico could have put it to bed in the first half an hour, couldn't they? Just the but that, again, that's football. You've got to take your chances, haven't you, when you get them? But I don't think overall over the two legs that was probably. Uh, their problem. Um, right, two semi-finals. Who's going to win them? Micah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got Bayern and Madrid on one side. Yep. I'm, I'm never going against Madrid again in my life. I can't <laughs> deal with the abuse. <laughs> <laughs> the reason is any. The thing we've got now as well, you think, you know, you know what we're like. We're all a bit tribal in many ways. So you're thinking, right, one of our English players, but we've got quite a few at most of those places. Three of them anyway, we've got obviously. But um, particularly Bellingham versus Kane in the semi final. And Dyer, he played. Dyer, didn't he? Yeah, all right, you, the lad. You know, you, yeah. You mentioned uh, Jaden Sancho as well and for, for Dortmund and, you know, Matson's on loan from Chelsea. It's just a, there's a few um, players from the Premier League um, that were in the Premier League. Who are you going for, Big Mix? Who are you going for? I'm going for the brilliance of Kylian Mbappe, hmm. PSG. I've got a feeling it's going to be a PSG Real Madrid final. Yeah. So who do you think have been, the, what, do you think PSG Real Madrid final, Micah? Agreed. Exactly I think it's that. almost meant to be with Mbappe's last, possibly last game for PSG against possibly the team that is most likely um, to join uh, Real Madrid. But um, I don't know. There won't be a lot in it between, I think, um, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. Not a lot. That's a tough one to call that. It's 50-50, I think, in my book. Maybe slight. I would say 60-40 Real Madrid, actually, I think. Alan, as much as as much as I hate to agree with you boys, I'm I would have to say the same. I would go Real Madrid and uh, and PSG. Monday night, we haven't had the chance to talk about it yet. An unbelievable performance from a certain Cole Palmer. <laughs> England have got four of what four of the best number tens probably in world football, haven't they? Uh, Jude Bellingham, Phil Amazing, Foden, Cole Palmer, and and James Madison. You probably put in there as well. Extraordinary talent. In, in, in that area of the field, but what a performance. Wasn't Just it? outrageously good. I mean, the, the confidence, the belief, all types of different goals. I mean, the header, the, the tap in, you know, right place, right time. The chip from God knows how far out. Um, the, the bend, I mean, the penalty, 
And what a faff on that was, was the other players trying to take the penalty off him. It's like, oh, my God. But what were they doing? What were they thinking? He scored every penalty he's taken. Stupid. The, Fucking and the idiots. same thing happened in, if you remember, we did, um, I did the FA Cup, you didn't do it, but um, I did the FA Cup tie, Chelsea Leicester. And the, the same thing happened there. Do you remember when Sterling grabbed the ball off him? I mean, he, he was incandescent with rage wasn't he after the game um, Poch I've never seen him come out and be so riled because an amazing victory an amazing performance and a brilliant individual performance was overshadowed by this nonsense about the penalty you could see why he was riled couldn't you yeah I, no, I was so glad because everyone's talking about Poch as a bit of a soft touch and all that and he could have glossed over it because they'd won 6-0 but he made a statement to basically say, this is not good enough and, and, and don't do it again. And I just thought it was brilliant management. Yeah, me too. And it went, you know, when they, he said, he, when they said, well, well, you know, did you decide who's, he is the penalty taker. He's got, and quite rightly so, because he's, well, I think he's got 100% record. He's isn't brilliant he? at the penalties, man. He's the so cool at them. Oh, he's, he's brilliant. At, he's brilliant at everything. I have to say, he just keeps getting better and better and better. He's, He's in the England squad, isn't he? I mean, Gareth could do with a squad of about 45, the way it's going, but um, the amount of players we've said. But, <laughs> well, he didn't feature at all, really, in the um, two England friendlies recently. Um, so you st I was starting to think he didn't want him to go on in case he did well and he'd, he's got, oh, I've got to put another player in. Um, but I don't, think, I don't think he can... I don't think he can not pick him. Not with, a, not with, the, the, with, his, with his form... I mean, we're, we're yet to hear whether it's going to be a squad of 26 or still of 23, aren't we? So we'll have to wait for that. That would make it a lot bloody easier for, for Gareth at getting up to 26. Um, no, no he's, he's played, he's, without doubt, he's, he, he has to have played his way into his uh, into his squad. I mean, the, the form that he's in, the goals that he's scored. 20 league goals. He sat top of the list for Haaland. As we, as we sit here, it's like, oh, it's ridiculous. It's madness. Who what, would have predicted that at the start of the season? No one. I, I yeah. think... The, the the wider point and the wider conversation is like Alan's completely right. It, the squad and we talk about players and their positions. The good thing about Cole Palmer, he, I think he's very affected from the right and center, and he actually can play false nine. So if you talk about someone like Watkins, he wants to run in behind Tony. Very good link up play, but Cole Palmer is very good with his back to goal as well. And he can dribble past people. So he, he has to go. Yeah, he's It's got, imperative he's, he goes. I think it's more a question now of, of whether he can get himself into the starting lineup and, you know, which position, obviously, because there's so much talent in those areas. But, um, I mean, this is the measure for me of, of what he's done this season. It's, it, it's not that difficult to to be really good in a side that's thriving and a side that's successful and a side that's got momentum and they're playing well. It's really not that easy to be outstanding in a side that have been struggling to find form, that have been struggling to find confidence, that have been struggling to find their best formation, that have been struggling to find their starting lineup. He has excelled despite all the issues that Chelsea had. And he's, and I know he's got that nickname Ice Cold, um, but he really is, isn't he? It does look like absolutely nothing affects him. Great attitude. What an attitude. He absolutely looks, he just looks so calm. Uh, looks so cool. Everything, you, what you've said. Um, he, on the penalties, he's just hugely confident that he's just, give me the ball, I'll take it and do what I have to do. And he's got a great style, technique. Um, I love his attitude. Bloody love his attitude. And that penalty thing's important because if you want to win a major championship, the chances yeah. are you're going to have to win a penalty shootout at some point. Yeah. What do you think, Mike? Did my man? I mean, I mean, it's very rare that I think you know Pep might get something wrong, but I think with with Cole Palmer, they they might have erred. It was just one of those, wasn't it, where Cole Palmer wanted to play right now. Yeah, and you can see to... why. Jaden Sancho before he he left to go to to Dortmund. It's just it's difficult because when you've got Foden wants to play as a number ten, but then you've got Kevin De Bruyne. You want then Foden gets shifted out to the right. Last few years you had Mares. Like where where can can you can you fit him in? 
But I just wish he, he went out on loan and he was ready to come back next season, raring to go. So, yeah, it's a it's a bitter it's a bitter one to uh, to swallow. One more issue I want to raise just before we go, and that is the abolishment of FA Cup replays. Um, I'm not a fan of replays. I understand their significance, particularly to the the smaller clubs, uh, the lower league clubs, and I totally get that and the possible finance of a replay that they may get. I know it doesn't happen very often, but it, it is the case. Um and I, but I do worry about you know the amount of games that footballers play. So the, the fewer fixtures, um, the better in that sense. Plus, of course, you've got the Champions League, which will be more games um, next season, possibly. But it's not really about the top clubs; it's about the smaller clubs. So, if they've taken the replay away, I think they need to find a way of recompensing um, the lower clubs in another way, whether it's to give them the all the revenue, perhaps, of wherever they're drawn, or whether the lower team. Uh, wherever they are in the football pyramid gets the home tie. Although I, I would understand if players, you know, they want to play at Old Trafford, they want to play at Anfield and Stamford Bridge and, you know, and all the big grounds. So um, what what are your thoughts? I think mine are mixed in a way. Yeah, I think mine are, mine are as well. I mean, there's, there's a, because probably the minority also think that the, the if you, if you, Going to, um, I mean, I, the extra time we know we'd get rid of, um, go straight to penalties. You're probably in with a better shout of going through on penalties and getting the lucrative game the next round anyway. If you if you yeah. were to get through, yeah, so, I agree with that. So yeah, I'm of that opinion as well. Um, probably, I think it'll probably it's probably going to split opinion, isn't it? Whether they think it's right or wrong. Yeah, I think it's pretty much the only club competition in the world that has replay. Yeah, but it, yeah, like it, it's tough, isn't it? You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. But like you said, I, I think it's becoming very elitist. And, and and this is what I don't I don't like. I, I think the format is is great. And like Gary, you said there about the revenue, it's important to these lower clubs. It's it's already harder for the the lower end of the Premier League clubs to challenge the top end of the elite. And now if you take, you know, the the lower leagues and you're thinking, okay, if we could get a draw, then we can go to Old Trafford. We've got two sets of revenue. This is what we... It just feels like the forget... The, it feels to me like they're getting forgotten about. And that's a bit that doesn't really sit well with me. I understand me. that. I, I think maybe the way around this is thinking about it again is is possibly the club in the lower league gets the profits of the day, the revenue from, from the top. Even a larger percentage, yeah, even a larger percentage. Look at, yeah. you know, they've got to find a way of, of, of looking after clubs that, that, that bloody well need the money. Um, and, and, and that is um, and the case. And the other news is that it's not for the first time, but they now decided that from here on in, the FA Cup will not be the last um, game of the domestic season that will be the penultimate game of the domestic season now I know in recent years it's happened once or twice um, and it's another one of those things that um, goes against tradition um, as it were but it also shows I think perhaps the power that the Premier League has it, uh, over football in this country yeah I mean I, I don't see I don't see that as a it's a huge issue. Um, I, the, there's going to be no Premier League football on that day, on the cup final day anyway, is there? So um, so I think that's important. But in terms of it, I'm, I, I wouldn't lose too much sleep over that. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd agree with that. I, I think, you know, when the FA Cup's a week after the season as well, that week after the season, you're just twiddling your thumbs, aren't you? You don't quite know, like, it's, it's a weird period, whereas... I think if it's before and there's still something to play for at the end, it's it's all just complicated, isn't it? Um, but I think that the, the wider issue is how big the Premier League and European football has become. And as long as we're looking after the, the lower teams, is it going to be matter a week later in the season or a week before? It shouldn't. But as long as it's fair. You know, we just don't want to run away with the the big teams because it's not fair to 
to, to where the... Those, those big Premier League giants that have failed to get into the Champions League <laughs> semi-finals. Uh, and, on, and on that note, um, we'll bid you farewell. Um, we'll be back on Monday with a review of the weekend's games in another vital weekend of Premier League football. But for now, that's it. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me.